Hello, and welcome to Crom Cooks, the only channel dedicated to teaching you how to do improv cooking at home. This video will teach you how to cook a classic of culinary cuisine, which starts with three essential ingredients. The first of which is seafood. I'm starting with some medium-sized shrimp, but you could use other seafood here. Crab, cod, bass, or any other white fish. And then I also have these beautiful little neck clams. They range from size, from small to large, but that doesn't really matter a whole lot. And then also these mussels, which are similar to the clams, but they have a lot more gaminess to them. The next main ingredient you need is a sausage. I have the Spanish chorizo, which is gonna bring an intense peppery and garlic flavor, but really any sausage will do. And the last ingredient is saffron. This unfortunately has no other substitutes because it's such a unique flavor that it really makes it the signature flavor of this dish. So what this means is that as long as you have saffron around, there's lots of different flavors and ingredients you can use in this dish. As long as you have some kind of seafood, saffron, and sausage, there's no limit to the variations you can make. So with all of these ingredients combined, I made... Classic paella, an intoxicating combination of flavors and spices that every home chef should learn how to make. So let's check out how to make it. This recipe begins like many others, which involves preparing a mirepoix, or as the Spanish call, a sofrito. So to begin, we'll take this onion and apply a special technique to peel it. Then we'll make several vertical slices and a horizontal slice. And then when slicing across, there's two moves I'm doing here. First I'm slicing down, then I'm reaching over with my finger and holding the onion so that as I drag the knife back, it holds the onion in place. If I don't do that second move, then as I slice down, the onion sticks to the knife and makes a little bit more of a mess. But if I do use that finger, it holds the onion in place. Moving on to the celery, I have several stalks here. Some of them normal, but some of them have lots of leaves. A lot of people throw these away, but don't. They have a lot of flavor, so we're gonna use them. But we are gonna separate them because they cook at different speeds in the stalks. And when slicing the stalks, we'll gather them and hold them with one hand and use the knuckle of that hand to guide the knife as you slice. This can feel real awkward when you first start cooking, but you gotta keep practicing. It's a really valuable knife skill that not only promotes safety, but also makes you look more legit. Chopping the leaves is a lot easier. You just put them in a pile, chop through them, rotate, chop again, until you get the size you want. Moving on to the carrots, I have some rainbow carrots here, but no matter how they look on the outside, they all taste the same on the inside. But interestingly, they don't all sound the same. So after peeling them, we're gonna use a box grater. And listen closely. All right, got some nice snare. How about this one? I can work with that bass line. And the last one? Huh, must be a good old country carrot. Well, if the sounds don't harmonize, at least the flavors will. And finally, the garlic, which if you hit just right, voila you get yourself a nice batch of finely minced garlic. Moving on to the triso, we're gonna see the same knife skills in action. Notice again how the finger's guiding the blade, so that all you have to do is move your finger to dictate the size of the slices that you want. This helps ensure that you get even sized pieces when you're cooking. With all the ingredients prepped, we can move on to cooking. That's gonna involve bringing four cups of chicken broth to a simmer and adding a pinch of saffron. There's not much here, but this will go a long way. Toss that in and let simmer for about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, put the chorizo in a cold pan and bring up to heat. This is gonna help release more of that flavorful fat. Once they have a nice brown on one side, go ahead and flip them over and brown them again, and then remove from the pan. Now add a healthy glug of olive oil, which is building more flavor into the pan and will help us coat all of the vegetables, which we'll add now. Give that a stir and add a pinch of salt. This next step is optional, but highly recommended if you have a mortar and pestle. Take your saffron and a little bit of the cooking liquid and grind it up as much as you can to create a saffronic slurry, and then add it back into your pot. And if you've done your job correctly, you should get a vibrant color to your broth, which kind of looks like nuclear waste, but I promise you it's not. Heading back to the other pan, we're gonna keep building more flavors. That's gonna involve adding the garlic, 
a healthy dose of paprika, and some tomato paste, which we'll caramelize by mixing with the vegetables. Next comes the rice. My local grocer carries this special paella rice, which has short grains and is hearty, so it takes longer to cook. But if you can't find this, arborio rice should do the trick. Add that to the vegetables, along with a pinch of salt, and then stir this to make sure that you coat every single grain of rice with that flavorful fat. Now we can add the celery leaves, the chopped chorizo, and the saffron broth. Mix it all together, making sure to scrape up all the fond and brown bits at the bottom of the pan. Then pop into a 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes. Take this time to relax, maybe read a book, or play a little game. And now it's time to finally add the seafood. You can arrange this however you want. I'm gonna put the shrimp in this decorative ring, followed by the mussels interspersed along with the clams. Then pop back into the oven for about 10 more minutes, which is just enough time to finish my game. 211 electrons. Nice, now I'm finally ready to feast. And when this comes out of the oven, you have a spectacular presentation, perfect for any large festive gathering such as a birthday party. You can put this in the middle of the table and eat it family style, or you can serve it individually, in which case you want to make sure everyone gets a little piece of everything. I also like to add a lemon wedge, which helps add some acidity and brightens up the flavors here. And when you go in for a bite, make sure to awkwardly get a scoop as you try to avoid blocking the camera until you realize you could just walk to the other side of the camera. Ah, much easier. Make sure to get a shrimp. And this is a little overcooked, so you could probably get away with five to seven minutes. But the mussels and the clams are actually cooked perfectly. They're soft and tender, but still have a toothsome chew. And altogether, this dish is a classic for a very good reason, because these flavors combine so incredibly well. The chorizo, seafood, and saffron all mix together to create this unique combination that is sure to blow your socks off, which makes this nothing other than classic paella. Mm -hmm.